Let's move on to our next presentation. And it's entitled a Performance of Expert um, TB, MTB RIF Testing for M tuberculosis Detection in HIV Positive and HIV Negative Pulmonary TB Suspects in Low versus High TB Prevalence Settings, ACTG 5295, TBTC34 uh, Study, and to be presented by Anne Lulkmeyer. And she's an Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of California in San Francisco and is also a clinician and researcher in the HIV. HIV AIDS division at uh, San Francisco General Hospital. Please. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the uh, uh, organizers for allowing me to present these data on behalf of the AIDS Clinical Trials Group uh, 5295 team and the Tuberculosis uh, Trials Consortium Study 34 teams. Uh, these are our disclosures. Um, as we've heard a lot about in this session, the gene expert MTB RIF is an automated real time PCR that identifies M tuberculosis as well as rifampin resistance using a self contained cartridge with minimal technical requirements and can provide results in under two hours. The MTB RIF has been endorsed for use by the WHO since 2010 and has been part of this worldwide rollout in many settings that are high prevalence for tuberculosis. Thus, the performance in high prevalence settings has been well characterized, with the sensitivity of one expert in an AFB smear positive specimen reported at 98 to 99 percent, and the sensitivity of one expert in a smear negative specimen of 60 to 70 percent, 60 to 70 percent, with an overall specificity of 98 to 99 percent. The expert MTB RIF is finally available in the United States with approval for use in July of 2013. However, data for use in lower TB prevalent settings, such as the United States and Australia, are limited, where performance could be affected by higher rates of non-tuberculosis mycobacterium and the overall lower rate of culture-confirmed tuberculosis in patients undergoing tuberculosis evaluation. Data have also been limited and somewhat conflicting for use in HIV infection, where rapid diagnosis of tuberculosis is critical and posse bacillary disease is more common. The aims of this study were to determine the sensitivity and specificity of expert MTB RIF assay overall and by AFB smear status. To evaluate expert performance in a lower prevalence uh, setting in the United States as compared to two higher prevalence uh, settings, Brazil and South Africa, and to evaluate performance uh, by HIV infected versus HIV uninfected status. To evaluate expert performance for the diagnosis of RIF resistance detection, and to evaluate performance of this assay in the setting of non-tuberculosis mycobacterial growth. The study population was comprised of pulmonary TB suspects, which were defined as individuals with an AFB positive sputum within seven days of entry, or individuals for whom there was clinical suspicion of TB, as evidenced by the treating clinician's decision to send sputum for AFB smear and culture, in addition to one or more of the following, cough, fever, night sweats, or weight loss. If TB treatment was present, it had to be present for less than 48 hours. In order to ensure a large sample of individuals from a low prevalence setting, the targeted enrollment from the United States was 70% or greater, with enrollment from the two higher prevalence sites of Brazil and South Africa capped at 30% total. All participants underwent HIV testing, and HIV infected and uninfected participants were allowed to uh, be part of this study. In terms of the methods, two samples were sent for expert MTB RIF testing using, using the most recent version uh, of the available cartridges, which is known as G4. The method of sputum collection, so induced versus expectorated, and sputum processing, unprocessed versus sedimented, prior to expert testing was determined by the local standard of care and was not assigned by the study. Expert was conducted within seven days of sputum collection. The expert testing occurred at two central labs in the United States and at one lab in Rio de Janeiro and one in Johannesburg, South Africa. Each of these labs participated in external quality assurance programs. The expert test results were compared to two sputum specimens, each of which were evaluated with AFB smear, liquid, and solid mycobacterial culture. Rifampin resistance testing was performed by the proportions method on Middlebrook agar. RPOB sequencing was conducted on a specimen from each participant that had one or more cultures uh, with TB growth. 
At the time of this analysis, 720 of 994 participants had results for two AFB smears, two liquid and solid media mycobacterial cultures, and two expert tests. The median age was 46.5. 63% of participants were male, 71% were enrolled for the United States, with 19% from South Africa and 10% from Brazil. 48% of participants were HIV infected, uh, and of the HIV infected patients, 41% came from the United States. I'm sorry, of the individuals enrolled from the United States, 41% were HIV infected. The individuals enrolled from South Africa, 79% were HIV infected. And from Brazil, 34% were HIV infected. The median CD4 cell count for HIV-infected individuals was 157, with an interquartile ratio of 44 to 369. 15% had one or more cultures that were positive for tuberculosis. Of participants with uh, culture-positive TB, 53% came from the United States, 40% from South Africa, and 6% from Brazil. Of those with culture-positive tuberculosis, 63% were smear-positive on one or more smears that were available for evaluation. 39% uh, were HIV-infected. When looking at rifampin uh, susceptibility, three out of 109 TB culture positive specimens had rifampin resistance, which accounted for 2.8% of participants. 91.7% of participants were rifampin sensitive, and 5.5% had either contamination on the drug susceptibility testing or no growth. Of participants, 9.3% had non-tuberculosis mycobacterial growth. Of this, 67% was um, mycobacterium avium complex, all of which came from United States participants. 6% had M. Kansasii growth, and 27% had other non-tuberculosis mycobacterium. The sensitivity of one expert for the diagnosis of tuberculosis was 85.8%. In smear-positive, TB culture-positive patients, the sensitivity was 100%, and in smear-negative, TB culture-positive patients, the sensitivity of one expert was 61.5%. There was no significant impact of, of the region on the sensitivity in the smear-negative, TB culture-positive patients. The specificity of one expert in culture-negative tuberculosis patients, in patients who did not have uh, tuberculosis, was 98.8%. In smear-positive patients, the specificity was 100%, and in smear-negative patients, the specificity was 98.8%. When focusing on the U.S. patients only, the specificity was 99.8%, 99.3% overall. In smear-positive patients, this specificity was 100%, and in smear-negative patients, 99.3%. There was no significant impact of the region of enrollment on the specificity of the one expert test uh, in individuals who did not have tuberculosis. When looking at the expert performance by HIV infection, um, overall, individuals who were smear positive had a sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 100%, regardless of the presence or absence of HIV infection. In smear negative individuals who had HIV infection, the sensitivity was 57.9% and the specificity was 58.3%. Was in smear-negative individuals who did not have HIV infection, the sensitivity was similar at 65.0% and a specificity of 99.3%. The difference between HIV-infected and HIV-uninfected patients was not statistically significant in these smear-negative patients. 67 uh, uh, individuals had non-tuberculosis mycobacterial growth. Three of these individuals were smear positive, none of whom were expert TB positive. In the 64 individuals who were smear negative with non-tuberculosis mycobacterial growth, one out of 64 had an expert uh, test that was positive for TB. Uh, this individual had four out of four cultures with mycobacterium avium growth, and none demonstrated tuberculosis growth. When looking at participants who had discordant results, looking at their expert and, and TB culture results, all discordance occurred in AFB smear negative specimens. There were 10 participants who had an expert TB positive test in the setting of TB cultures being negative. 
four of these individuals had both expert tests, one and two, that were positive in the setting of TB culture negativity. Six of the individuals had only one of the expert tests that were positive uh, for tuberculosis in the setting of TB culture negativity. When looking at individuals um, who were TB, uh, expert TB negative in the setting of one or more TB cultures that were positive for TB growth, uh, there were 15 individuals whose first expert test was TB negative. Of these, the second expert test was TB positive in three out of the 15. This led to a 20% incremental yield of the second expert test. Thus, in AFB negative, TB culture positive patients, the sensitivity of two experts was 69.2%, which was an increase from the sensitivity of one expert of 61.5%. When looking at expert test characteristics for determination of rifampin susceptibility, there were three rifampin resistant specimens by culture-based drug susceptibility testing, and expert correctly identified three out of these three specimens. The specificity was 98.8%. One participant had an expert RIF resistant test in the setting of culture based drug susceptibility testing that showed rifampin sensitivity. This individual underwent two expert tests as outlined by the protocol one was RIF resistant and one was rifampin sensitive. RPOB sequencing showed wild type, uh, showed a wild type RPOB, suggesting that this expert RIF resistance was a false positive. Overall, the negative predictive value for rifampin resistance testing was 100%, and the positive predictive value in, a small no in this small number of patients with rifampin resistance detected by uh, expert testing was 75%. In conclusion, we found an excellent performance for the detection of tuberculosis in lower TB prevalent settings with a sensitivity in smear positive patients of 100% and a sensitivity in smear negative patients of 61.5%. The overall specificity was 98.9% and 99.3% in low prevalence US participants. The performance was not significantly impacted by region nor by HIV status. Expert testing correctly identified three out of three specimens with rifampin resistance by culture-based drug susceptibility testing, but there was one participant with a false positive expert rifampin resistance test. In summary, these data support the use of the expert MTB RIF in low prevalence settings and continued use in HIV infection. I want to acknowledge the uh, study participants, the support for this study from the NIH, CDC, and Cepheid, the study teams from the ACTG and the TBTC, the CDC tuberculosis lab, which conducted uh, uh, much of the RPOB sequencing and the rifampin susceptibility testing, and the participating ACTG and TBTC sites and site investigators. Thank you.